Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how you can self host a MinIO server, which is essentially kind of like an object store server where it's like S3, where you create a bucket, you put objects in it, which can consist of directories or files, um, and then use it for like your application where you can say, hey, I need to put something into the object store, I need to grab something from the object store, um, and it's just kind of all there. So. This is kind of a nice, fun solution um, to use if you're wanting to self-host your own kind of object store um, because S3 obviously is in the cloud. You can't self-host that. So if you wanted to do something that's more self-hosted um, in your own home lab or in your own business, um, MinIO might may work for your solution. Um, stay tuned. Just keep watching. See if it is or not. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, it kind of gives you a very similar feel to like S3 if you've ever used S3. Um, but we'll show you how you can create a server, self-host it, and create a few buckets, and um, maybe upload some files. Um, and then in a separate video, we'll show you how you can install the uh, client for it that you would use um, in like Linux, and how you can navigate through that um, object store in uh, a command line. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is create a server for this um, because obviously this will need a server to be used to actually set it up. So what we'll do here is we'll update the DNS that we have. Um, and I've automated most of this process in my automation series videos uh, that you can check out that playlist if you're interested. Um, min IO. So I'm not going to like, you know, cover everything in depth here, but um, Essentially, we're going to create the DNS entry. The server will live on 172.16.1.88. Um, so we go commit that, add min.io. And then we will need to update our inventory in Ansible, which will essentially allow us to target the server when it's created and then allow us to essentially configure it um, through our normal server build process here. So. We'll add this to our inventory. Admin IO. All right. So now that that is done, what we can do is go to our AWX. We'll log in. And we will go to our templates and we will create a new VM. So this is our normal workflow where we would create a new VM, patch it, install Docker, configure sets for it, and install Nginx. But um, we really don't need like the last three in this case. We really only need the VM and patch, but we're gonna just run through the whole workflow. Um, it's okay that we have Docker and sets and everything else. Um, but we'll just pretend that that doesn't really exist, right? Um, so what we'll do here is uh, the host name will be min.io. The new address will be 88. I think it was 88. Let's double check that here real quick. We can look in here. Yeah, 88. Um, we'll just name this dragon min.io. Um, we have to set a proxy for Nginx, even though uh, we won't be using it. Um, I'll probably make a new section that will essentially not include that if I don't need it. Um, but in this case, we'll just set something default like that, which won't matter. So we'll hit launch. Um, it'll run through our whole playbook um, in here and essentially get everything that I need to at least start the server. Um, and then we'll just use what it is there. So we'll fast forward the video because this will take a few minutes. So we'll fast forward it uh, to the point when we're ready to um, start configuring it. All right. So now that the server is created, what we can do is actually open up a terminal and uh, log in to our server. up the host key, type in a password, and we are in. So what we'll do is follow the guide that is on the website, install uh, Linux. And we're not going to be fancy. We're just going to do a single node, single drive situation. Obviously, you can do like single node, multiple drives, multiple nodes, multiple drives, distributed. Um, you know, obviously, the the different ways to do it is to make it, you know, more resilient to issues or downtime or things like that. But in this case, 
we're going to say if the server dies, the server dies in this case. Um, but you can obviously go through um, other ways of installing that are more redundant for sure. But for our home lab, we're just going to just do a single node, single drive, keep it simple, right? Um, so we'll scroll down. We'll essentially just go through this installation. There isn't actually too much to it. It's actually pretty simple. Um, so we'll use this wget, but in this case, we will uh, need to install wget first. So let's make sure it's installed. And then we will pull down the package, the RPM. And we can paste that. And it will pull over here. All right, so now that the binary is there, so we got, uh, not the binary, the RPM, um, we can now install the RPM. So we can actually just use yum install in this case, and we will install the RPM. It will prompt us for, do we want to install it? We'll hit yes, and it is installed. So um, with that, it will create the systemd package. So we, it has all this. We're going to not touch this file at all. We're just going to leave it as is. So we can actually see it in here if we were to look at it um, and actually cut this file. So this, this file gets created when we installed it. So we can see everything in here would be what's in here. Um, it obviously looks a little bit worse formatting, but it's it's in there, trust me. Um, the things to note here is it will be using the min IO hyphen user um, and the group, which is a good thing because that's what we want. We don't want it to you know run as root. Um, so what we will need to do is actually create the users and the group. So in this case, we can follow what they have in here. We will create the group, we'll add the user min io user and the group and then this 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 part right here um so in, in this case what we're going to do is we'll we'll make a directory just called data and this is this is where all the buckets and object stores will live in so we'll just set it so that it's min io user min io user um owns that directory and and that will be what we need here um, then we'll need to create this configuration file. So via Etsy default min IO. Um, and we can copy what, what's in here. Oop. What's the last line too? There we go. And paste it. Um, so there'll obviously be a few things that we want to change. So you want your root user and your password. So um, I'm just going to leave it as admin and password just for demoing purposes here. Obviously you should change that and not have it be uh, admin and password, but this will be what you'll be used to log in once it starts. Um, and then we, we put it as just slash data. So we'll just leave it as slash data in here. Um, and then the server will be what we have at dragon.local like that. So those are the few things that you'll need to change. Um, obviously, depending on where you put your volumes that you want, um, it'll be different as well as the URL and, you know, change your password <laughs> for your uh, root user, but we'll leave as that. Um, and then what we can do is start the min.io service. Um, and we'll actually want to also enable it just so that it starts on uh, reboot. But we should be able to see if we were to do a uh, system CTL status min.io service, we should be able to see that it is running and that everything should be good. So we can actually just uh, let it run here. Um, but now what you can do here is HTTP min io dragon local 9000. You should actually get the object store um, GUI in here um, and you can actually log in with the username and password that you created back in the configuration. And from here, you can essentially do your, um, you know, GUI stuff. You can create buckets, you can create policies, you can create your identity for like other users for access keys and secret keys. Um, there's some monitoring stuff, uh, events, tiering, if you're interested in tiering, um, site replication, which I think I'll probably play around with here later. Um, but Essentially, it's kind of just like S3. You would just go in here, create a bucket. You can name it like test bucket. We can turn on versioning. We can turn on object. 
I'm lacking quotas or retention. Um, there's like a lot of easy kind of things. Um, ooh, governance, compliance versus governance. Interesting mode. Um, and you can obviously keep, make it pretty simple to use. So we'll, for example, just turn on like versioning. We could exclude some stuff, but we won't. We'll just create it. So then you got your bucket here. Um, if you go to object browser, you can click on it and you can upload things into this bucket. So like in S3 in the GUI, you can do that too. You can upload a file or a folder. Um, so in this case, we can upload like this random doc. It'll get uploaded. You can see that it uploads. Um, and if you were to look onto the server itself and we went to our data directory, we can see that the test bucket exists and there's a random doc in it. So on the back end, it'll just kind of still be like files, um, but this is actually more of an object store and you're gonna get to see it a little bit more um, once we kind of do a little bit more with it. But that is how you set up a MinIO server. Um, probably in our next video or a few, in a few videos, in a future, vi future video, um, we will be installing the min IO uh, MC command line thingy so that you can do like how you would do like with S3, like the AWS S3 LS commands. But in this case, we would be doing like MC LS type commands um, on the command line to kind of show you how you can navigate, create stuff or upload stuff um, via command line and not use the GUI. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.